Hi everybody, I'm Dennis Daly. I spent 20 years with United Press International, most of it with the old UPI radio network. And my favorite assignment was going on the road producing and hosting American Montage. It was an hour-long weekly program. Now here's an edited version of one of those shows. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's American Montage. We're on the road again. Maybe I should say we're on the tracks again. We're walking alongside an excursion railway that runs through one of the most historic sites in the United States. There were a lot of freight cars coming through here in the 1800s. 5,000 head of cattle a day were processed here for this is the Fort Worth, Texas Stockyards. It is not what it once was. You can see remnants of some of the pens. Some of the buildings have burned, some have been taken down, but there is new life here because this whole area has been turned into shops and taverns and some wonderful restaurants, including a place called the Spaghetti Warehouse that used to be a big office building. The reason we're here is the Pillsbury Company is having its wonderful annual Pillsbury Bake Off in nearby Dallas. I thought it would be fun to come here to start with because we tend to think of Fort Worth not too much when we think of Dallas. It is the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, but Fort Worth does have an identity all its own, and the Pillsbury Company thought it might be fun to bring the hundred contestants and some of we hangers-on in buses over here to Fort Worth to show us a little bit of the other half of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. The Pillsbury Bake Off has been going on for decades. It is probably the premier cooking competition in this country. We're going to be talking to people from Pillsbury and some of the contestants, and we'll be tasting and smelling some of the wonderful things they're cooking up this year. Let's switch from the Dallas Stockyards to uh, the inside of the Fairmont Hotel in downtown Dallas for the annual Pillsbury Bake Off. That is one of the magic things about radio. I guess it is as close to Star Trek as you can get transporting yourself from one place to the other. We are in one of the ballrooms at the Fairmont Hotel in downtown Dallas, and this room is absolutely full of people and microwave ovens and regular stoves and refrigerators and camera crews and people such as myself. But the most important people who are here are the 100 finalists in this year's Pillsbury Bake Off. We're going to talk to a few of them as we walk down the aisle. David LaBird is uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, he uh, is uh, no stranger to cooking. David, I walked in here to the, to the uh, biggest assemblage of stoves I uh -huh. think I've ever seen in my life. First of all, tell us a little bit about how, since this is radio and people can't see it, how it's set up so everybody's on an equal footing. Well, as far as the um, stove setups are, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows of stove and uh, workstation setups throughout the whole uh, whole uh, ballroom here at the Fairmont Hotel. And uh, you have people just all over here just cooking all sorts of great things. Um, you know, I've got a lady over here cooking a corn and bean salad and a lady to uh, my right cooking a Reuben casserole and a lady over here cooking, someone over here cooking cookies. And Needless to say, it really, smells wonderful. It in smells here. wonderful. It's got a lot of activity going on. I mean, this is really a very exciting event for me. It's for, for anybody involved in here. You know, one of the things I noticed, Kenmore has supplied all the, all the stoves. Uh -huh. I guess maybe I've lived in an old house for a long time. I've never seen a range that looks this space age before. It's got all kinds of readouts and everything. This is really high tech. I'll tell you, Kenmore has really done a fantastic job with the with their ovens. I mean, I have an old oven at at home, and uh, when I came down here to the Bake Off, I had to stop by the uh, Sears with uh, little little uh, meetings with the Sears people just to show me how this oven works. But it's great, you know. It sets your your own um, um, heat for the oven is set. You just push a button, and uh, it tells you when it gets to the uh, uh, temperature that you want. And then right next to it, you have a um, timer, and it just counts down from the time that you started. So it's really a, a beautiful piece of equipment. Uh, I think and, the other thing is I'm not used to seeing ranges that are so clean. Yeah, this, this is true. <laughs> this week on American Montage, we are the guests of the Pillsbury Corporation. For the 37th time, they have put on the annual Pillsbury Bake Off. I know of 
no other cooking competition in America that draws so much attention. And maybe one reason is the big million-dollar prize. We're going to be spending this hour in the Fairmont Hotel in Dallas talking to many of the contestants and uh, some of the people who make the Pillsbury Bake Off possible. I cannot tell you what a wonderful assemblage of fun people from around the nation I met at this year's competition. Only one would win the one million dollar prize and this year it was Kurt Waite, a self-taught cook, a single father of one from California. He competed against 99 other finalists. They said they liked the dessert he made because of the ease of preparation. It was a macadamia fudge tort, and for that, he won one million dollars. There were some $10,000 winners, including one woman we had talked to before the judging was completed, Fran Neval of Salem, Oregon. Remember her? I talked to her sister. We live together. So what did you think the odds were of you both being selected? I didn't think both of us would get it in the same year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just blew our mind when we found out that each other had been selected. And we didn't know when they called, they called Florence first, and I didn't know that she had been selected. And when they call me, they didn't tell me that Florence had been selected, so... Well, the computer didn't tell them. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> now, you're fixing what? I am fixing orange-glazed tropical fruit scones. And it's uh, a scone made, rather than with cream, it has milk in it. And I have added um, uh, vanilla uh, chocolate chips, or vanilla chips, it's not chocolate. Vanilla. How would you define a scone? Well, it's from the biscuit uh, category, and... Personally, I never liked scones before. And I was so going to say, the ones I've always had have been dry. Dry and not real flavorful. So I put something in it that's going to be good. I'd like for you to try it and see if, if you agree. But it's very flavorful with the tropical fruit added and the, the uh, white vanilla chips. And then I slice it and I put in an apricot pineapple preserves. Apricots are big this year. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're very flavorful. Yeah. I use them a lot in my baking. Well, Fran, thanks a lot and good luck. Thank you very much. One of the great things was meeting people from all over the country, listening to the different accents. Here's Carla Kunoff from Bloomington, Indiana, but you can tell she's not a native Hoosier. Cousin, uh, dinner rolls, a stick of butter, two cups of slivered almonds, and one and a quarter cup of uh, sugar. That's now, all. You, you, by your accent, I don't think you're from Texas originally. No, I'm not. I'm from Germany, and I came 1962 to the United States, and uh, I have uh, changed the uh, German recipe, which takes hours to prepare, to a modern version, which I can make now in 20 minutes. Isn't that kind of a secret anymore? Everybody is in such a, a darn hurry. Right. Uh, I started changing my uh, original recipes when I started working. I worked full-time at Indiana University, and uh, I needed still to keep up the tradition of having home-baked things, and uh, that's why I started doing these shortcuts. Is there a lot of good pastry in Germany? I, I just, when I when think of that and I heard your accent, I thought, you're really from pastry country. That's right. I, I believe so, because the pastry shops are everywhere, and uh, that's the fun part when you go to Germany. You get all the good breads and pastry. But you didn't have to go to Germany to eat well or sample great food. It was all there at the 37th Pillsbury Bake Off. Again, a young man, and a man winning for the first time from California, $1 million. Kurt Waite from Redwood City, California. My special thanks to Ann Fitzsimmons of the Pillsbury Company, to also the fine folks at the Fairmont Hotel in Dallas for all the wonderful food and the entertainment, and also my congratulations to the winners and all the people we talked to at the annual Pillsbury Bake Off. We've got to go back in another two years and see what happens down in Orlando. And there you have it, another edited episode of one of the American Montage programs prepared for the UPI Radio Network back in the 1980s and 90s. I'm Dennis Daly. Thanks for listening. Thanks for going with me this week. And check YouTube for more American Montage programs.